Hi, I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to look at the process of making convex letters. So I'm going to start off in Photoshop, where I've written an action that I'll provide in the link below, just so that you don't have to go through the process of doing the convex effect every time. And then I'm going to make it into a finished gilded panel. But before I move on, if you're interested in seeing any of the work I've produced over the years, I've put a link to my Instagram in the description below. And I've also put a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some of my old vector designs. So now I'm just going to jump over into Photoshop and get started with the process. Okay, so I've got Photoshop open and I've just made an 8 by 10 inch canvas. So I've got everything closed. Um, and if you're not familiar with Photoshop, to open the panels that we need, you go up to Window. And we're going to need to see two things. Firstly, we're going to need to see our layers. And then secondly, we're going to need to see the actions. So there's a link in the description to a Photoshop action that I've written. So if you download that and then go into load actions and then locate where it's downloaded to, click on this and then bring it in. And then that is in your actions. Although it's an action, there is a step that I need you to take before it will work properly. And there's also some limitations to it. So I'll go through those. Now, firstly, all I'm going to do is go to the type tool and just click on there. And I'm going to do just a single letter. So if I come over here to click that. And this font is Times New Roman and it's free on every computer. So you should have access to it. Now what we need to do before we run the action, and this should be a one-off thing, and you might need to reset this depending on the effect that you're getting from the action. So what we need to do is set where our light source is going to hit this letter. So if I go to Layer, Layer Style, and Bevel and Emboss. Now that's one way of getting to this, and I'll show you the other now. The other way to get to your layer styles is by double-clicking on the layer. So if I just double-click here, that's opened my layer styles, and then I can go to Bevel and Emboss. Now, you're not going to see that anything has happened here, but if I zoom in, you can see that there is a kind of a slight bevel on the edge of this. Now, the action is going to apply this properly, but all we need to do first is to make sure that the light is set how it needs to be. And these are the settings here. It's likely that when you open the bevel and emboss for the first time, this will be set at 90. But because we want the kind of angle to come in from the top right corner, it's best to set this to 45 and make sure that this is set to 30. So 45 and 30, that's all you should need to do. So if I just go OK, I'm just going to go Control 0 to fit that on screen. And then with the convex type action, if you just press play, and that's how it comes out. Now, you'll notice here that there's a layer effect. And the reason I've left that as a layer effect and haven't kind of merged it down is because depending on the size that you want your text, this, this stroke weight might need to change. So if I just double click on this, just to show you what this is. So the stroke is just this line that's going around the outside. And I've got this at 13 pixels, but you know, if I scale this up and down, um, you can set it to what you want. But for a, one this size, it's fine. But with, a, with that being a layer effect, that doesn't change if I scale this down. So if I'm scaling this down, the stroke stays at 13 pixels, which obviously for something this size is not what you're going to want. So that's the reason I've left it as a layer effect is if you're doing something smaller, you can just come back in here, double click on the layer and then dial that stroke weight down. But I'll just undo that, go back to the actual size. And if it's come out like this, which I think is really nice, all you need to do is go to flatten image and then save it as a JPEG. And that's ready to be imported into Vinyl Master to be vectorized. Now, I said there were some limitations with this and I'll show you what they are. So if I start with a, with a square and just put this on a new layer and fill this square with black. So I'm just going to double click on this here, go to bevel and emboss. Now the settings that I used in case you wanted to know is it's a chisel hard and then you've got these two settings here, your size and your depth. 
if you see if I pull my size in that is making that sort of chiseled edge come in but it will only go into a certain point so when I say this won't work on large files that's because this needs to meet in the middle to make it that nice convex effect but obviously if it's too big that's not going to happen and you can't type in higher values here it just will only let you go up to 250 so that is a shame but it's just something you should bear in mind if you're using a really bold and bulky font that there's a chance that you're not going to get these two beveled edges to meet in the middle and while this is a layer effect similar to the stroke that will maintain its kind of values uh, no matter how much you sort of transform this so around about this thickness is the maximum that you're going to get using this effect here but it doesn't need to be on text so I can run that action on this shape and this is the effect that will come out with so using this I'm just going to set up a simple panel that I'm going to then make guild and reverse paint so I quite like the Times New Roman M I think it's a really classy font so I'm just going to stick this in the middle here and because I've already set up that lighting angle when I first went into the bevel and emboss menu I can just press plate now so I've just typed the letter M click on the convex type press play and then that will just run and then give me exactly what I need so all I'm going to do now is flatten this I'm going to invert it and that's control or command I control if you're on a PC command if you're on an Apple Mac and that's it so I'm just going to save this as a JPEG and then take it into Vinyl Master to vectorize it Okay, so vinyl's picked, now just going to sandblast the areas that I've exposed. So let's go to the shed. Right, so the lacquer's dried. So now what I'm going to do is paint the areas around the letter. Now, one thing I forgot to mention at the start of this is this is my method of doing this, and it's not necessarily the right way. It's certainly not the way people do it in the trade. People would ordinarily use a size mix where they would paint the convex areas onto the glass then they wait for that to go tacky which takes varying amounts of time depending on what the size mix is and then once that has gone tacky they use transfer leaf and not loose leaf which is like gold leaf with a bit of backing paper you kind of put that onto the tacky areas rub it and then that rubs off so i thought i'd explain the right way or well, not necessarily the right way but the way it's done in in the kind of trade and then i'm just showing you the kind of way i've figured out how to do it so just thought I'd put that out there. What I'm going to do now is just remove the remaining black vinyl from around the lettering. So let's just pull this away. And just being careful not to take bits of the letter with me. So I'll just put my blade into the corner there to make sure that doesn't pull away an area that I, that I don't want to, to go. So.
Okay, now I'm just going to set this to time lapse while I paint it, but I'm using, what's this? Emerald green, which is a one shot paint. So I'll get cracking with the painting now. Okay, so I've left that to dry and now I'm just going to remove the vinyl. Now there's only a couple of things to know when you do this and that is firstly you don't want to nudge the vinyl because that will make the glue kind of smear into the glass. Now it's not the end of the world if that happens, you can just clean it off with a cotton bud and some white spirit but it's better if you don't have to. So all I'm going to do is make a tiny little cut on one of these lines and I want to be careful not to touch any of the etched areas because I've applied the clear lacquer and I don't want to scratch that. So I'm just going to go with one of the fine bits near a corner and just do a tiny little cut like that. And then with that, I can pick that up. And then what I want to be doing is not pulling it up because there's a risk that I could take some of the paint with it. So I want to kind of pull it, you know, along the line that it's going down and I'm going to use some tweezers for that so once you've got a bit you don't need to use the tweezers but it's just good to do that when you when you first start so pulling it along these lines Yeah, and that's that. So now just going to move on to applying the gold leaf. Okay, so all the paint's dry. I'm just going to apply the 23 karat gold leaf. Now I won't do this as a full gilding tutorial because I've done quite a few gilding tutorials. So I'll leave links to those up in the top right corner. What I will do is just cover the slightly different process for burnishing on something where we've got etched glass. So firstly, I'm just going to lay that gold leaf. So. Let's just get the very mild, small amount of petroleum jelly. I have to emphasize that every time after I messed up in one of my other videos and all the gold leaf kept getting stuck to the tip. So now I'm going to use the cushion because I don't want to use whole leaves because it'll be a waste on something that's just, you know, quite thin parts. So I can cut this leaf up. Let's just cut a thin strip first and then apply that down here. Okay. So that's gone on nicely. So I'm just going to repeat that process over the whole piece and then stop and come back to just talk about how to burnish it. So this is what we've got so far and you can see it definitely needs burnishing because you can see all the little folds in the gold. Now the only difference with how you'd burnish this to how you'd burnish something that was either acid etched or just plate glass is the fact that even though I've applied the lacquer to the etched areas they are still rough so when you burnish it you are likely to take a bit of, of leaf off that. Now it, looking at this the etched areas actually look all right, apart from there, that looks a little bit tatty. But so you can see, you can get away with not burnishing a lot of these etched areas anyway, they've gone on really even. So I'm probably just going to do something around that little area. And then when I reapply the second coat of gold, that'll tidy that up. 
and then just burnish all of the bits that are mirror finished gold. So just going to turn that round. So let's just get started ever so gently just rubbing that across there. You can see that tidies that up lovely. When you apply the second coat that gives it such a, a clean mirror finish. Just remembering to kind of rotate it as well because you don't want to kind of just keep using the same bit of cotton wool because the gold flakes that are rubbing off will actually scratch the gold leaf that's on there. So, and never worry about what it looks like after you've first burnished it. You know, you're bound to take a fair amount of gold off and that will leave gaps and that's, that's to be expected, that's fine. And here's the finished piece. So I think it's come out really nicely. It's a bit of an unconventional method of creating this effect, but I think it works just as well as the traditional method. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon and please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.